for having me here. Um, well, I just would like to tell something about myself. I was born in Russia when it was still part of the Soviet Union. And then when it fell apart, my family moved to Germany, <clears throat> where I basically grew up. And then when I was 16, I went to the US for an exchange year. I just thought I will go for a year and um, then come back. But then I really liked it. I applied for a college. I got a scholarship, and I stayed on. And I was stuck in the US for the next seven years. But then I really wanted to do something else. And this job came up in Calcutta at the Indo-German Chamber of Commerce, and I moved to Calcutta. Now, um, I had never been to India before. And, um, but I spoke Hindi because I used to watch lots of Hindi films when I was in college. So I watched everything from Piazza, Pakiza, Mughalayazam to um, International Killardi, right? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and by watching films about India, I, I mean, I really liked it. I always was fascinated by cultures and languages. And um, in the US also, when I was working in the field with the Mexican workers, I learned Spanish. So through watching Hindi films, I learned Hindi. And when I was in New York, there were lots of people from Bangladesh and Pakistan and India. And I used the opportunity to improve my Hindi by just speaking to them. You know, I, the three words I could string together, I would you know, catch the next Sadarji in the cab, and I would start speaking to him. And uh, uh, I mean, it was a broken Hindi, and people would laugh. But I would continue. I would speak, because I really liked it. And for me, I think um, languages are the way of getting to know people. Because if you want to know a culture, you have to speak the language. And that's why I like languages, because I love different places. And for me to understand them, the only way is to learn languages. Um, yeah. OK, so um, <clears throat> then I was working in Calcutta, and um, I didn't really like the diplomatic kind of setup of the Chamber of Commerce. It was not my thing. I was always very creative. I wanted to make my own documentary films. And at that time, <clears throat> somebody asked me to come to a set of an Australian movie as a background artist. And I said, yeah, let's go. Just check it out, how it works. And um, then I met an associate director there who asked me to play for a small role in a Bengali film. And I said, I don't know. I've never acted in a Bengali film. Like, uh, what do I do? But I said, no, just come for two, three days. It'll be OK. So I did that and um, because I used to do acting in college in theater, and I really liked it. And I came on the set, and I liked it. And then another film offer came, and then another. And I do speak a bit of Bengali um, since I learned it living in Calcutta. And then I thought, why not act in Hindi films? So I quit my job. I moved to Bombay. I didn't know anybody in Bombay. I mean, it's a typical story, kind of 5,000 rupees in your pocket. Don't know anybody, you get there. Um, and I started giving auditions. And um, then I started getting films, smaller roles, larger roles. And that's how it happened. But anyway, this is just a small introduction about myself. What I really want to talk about is like when people meet me, they always ask me, oh, ma'am, do you like India? And I find it very funny, because there's always this kind of approach like, like I mean, that there is maybe something not to like about India. But I, I, you know, because like, no, seriously, because in other countries, nobody asks me, like, oh, do you like the US? <laughs> nobody is like that. They like, assume, of course, you like the US, and that's how it is. But <coughs> <coughs> of course, I like India. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. But that said, I like every country in the world. Because, I mean, people live in every country. There's no such thing that, I mean, of course, there are certain living conditions that are very different. But there are millions and millions living in every country. So that means people can live, so why can't I? So you should be able to live anywhere. That's my kind of thought. But India is very special. And um, what is special about India, I think it's very chaotic. It's very disorganized. But that's also the beauty of it. No, really. I think it's very liberating to have that kind of openness. Because <clears throat> in the US, or even in Europe, in Europe especially, things are so regulated and so hemmed in that you there's no flexibility. And in India, you have this whole thing. Ho jayega, chalta hai, dugar, right? You have. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that is true. I think this is the beauty of India. I mean, the other coin, of course, is the mess and craziness, which sometimes things fall apart. But on, and it's always like that. It's always the, the both sides of the coin that are positive and negative. So this is what I like. I mean, if you look at, like, my experience is a lot in shooting. So for example, if you're shooting something, it's 2 AM, the director needs something, he calls somebody up, and you know, they go somewhere in the auto direction, come back in 30 minutes with a part. Now, we were shooting in uh, Prague. It was Saturday, 6 PM, and the director asked, I need something, like in what, two hours. And I say, no, sir, how, we cannot do this. Everything is closed, and tomorrow and Sunday. And then on Monday, we have to go there and make this application. And then you'll get it by Monday, 3 PM. And he was like, but I need it right now. So, in India, you have this flexibility to get things done. And I think that is what is so wonderful about it. And 
another metaphor I can also think about India that India is like the Indian train system. Like I really love trains. I mean trains, <clears throat> the love for trains started uh, when I was in Russia, going from Moscow to Kiev every year to my grandmother's house. But trains in India, again, are very flexible. You have the first class, second class, uh, three AC, you have the sleeper, and you have the unreserved compartment. Now what does it mean? It means you can get anywhere. Like if you want to really get there, you just you know board the cramped unreserved compartment with your goat or whatever. I mean, and you go there. <laughs> now, can you do this in the US? I don't think so. <laughs> or you can go second class, Aram say, right? So you have a choice. And I think that's what's so beautiful about it. And again, uh, trains in India, uh, the, the, um, the non-AC sleeper and the unreserved compartment, the doors are open, right? I mean, how beautiful is that? It's the most wonderful thing. Because in, in Europe, in the US, the trains are closed. Everything is closed. You always like, don't have that kind of freedom. Like in a train in India, you sit in the open door and you feel the train moving. You feel... I mean, I find it beautiful. Isn't it? Like, it, it excites me every time. <clears throat> it excites me every time I go on the train, be it local or anywhere. And I, I find it amazing. Like many times, like one time I made a mistake of making a wrong booking, going from Calcutta to Roxol. I was going to Nepal. And um, there was a wrong date set on my mobile phone. And when I came to the station, um, it realized like, that the, the train I booked the tickets for was yesterday. But I really wanted to get there. I didn't want to wait. So then these guys said that, you know, you can go by unreserved compartment. And I said, OK, let's do that. So I bought 126 rupee uh, a ticket and went in this unreserved compartment. Luckily, there was a ladies one. So I went there. And it was amazing because we were traveling through Bihar. And uh, the group that was traveling, it was a whole village. And this lady asked me, like, up uh, akele ho? So I said, I said, I'm not alone, you are But for, for them, it was very funny. It was like, this is my chachi, this is my poti, this is my parosi. So the, like, the people like, were not used to traveling alone. The whole village was traveling together. And then they took me in, they shared the food. It was really lovely. So I think this is the, these are the things that India has going for it. I mean. And again, another factor that I would like to address is that, you know, so many people immigrate to the U.S. for a better opportunity or to, the, to Europe. So you have this whole, you know, like, that's a normal thing. People from so-called developing countries go to the first world, whatever. But I mean, I think we should break this paradigm. I mean, it, it depends on you what you want to do. I mean, I moved, or oh, people ask me, so how does it feel living in India after being in the U.S.? But I mean, like, why does this world have this hierarchical thing? So India is here, U.S. is here, you cannot go there. I mean, it's... It's, it's a world, it's different countries, different experiences. I mean, I learned so much in India and I learned so much in the US. So you cannot um, have this value system attached. The same thing like people say, you know, mm, people who speak Hindi uh, is not as valuable as people who speak English. Or, you know, that's why in Bombay, everybody speaks English. Or people don't speak Hindi as much. And I, I think it's wrong. No. <clears throat> because every experience has its own value and its own place. Um, so. Yeah, that's what I think. I think it's, it's, it's very important to be able to create opportunities here. And again, it starts in the mind. We immigrate somewhere else because we think it's going to happen there. But I'm saying if you would invest the same kind of energy in abroad doing something, you could do something in India. And why not? I mean, it's a wonderful country. It's a wonderful place. Um, things are opening up. And uh, yeah, I think um, we should be doing that. And that's the end of my talk. <laughs>